sides, what we got here is my controller for my Hudson Hubson X4H501S quadcopter or drone. Now this is great. I love the quadcopter. Much better now I've got this firmware update. Now some of you may think, oh what's these for? Well these are for two things. One there so I don't actually be resting on them while I'm doing this. And I do have a little bit of extra here just to help me out with that. And two, it's my answer to if I'm in follow me mode and I want to chuck this in my backpack. How can I do that? Well I can put these on. But today, when I took it out today and I put it into, oh, I think it was in return to home, so it doesn't work. As far as I could work out, it switched these off, return to home. That's good. But in follow me mode, it doesn't. You can still use these. But if you put these on, it sort of like stops the movement of them. And if you put an elastic band across, that will do it uh, even better. And then you can just chuck it into the back of your backpack. I, I'm going to put this into a netted part of the exterior part of my backpack on the back and then see if I get a good follow me mode but I'm going to go into an open field to do it because this doesn't like doing that follow me mode when you're running in and around trees it's not very good for your quadcopter because it's blind it may have the camera but it can't negotiate around things so but <clears throat> the thing is with these of course is they get through the batteries really quickly and although, you know, I've got no problems with charging up the rechargeable batteries that I've got, the problem is some of my rechargeable batteries now are starting to show signs of age because I've had them for quite... Oh, what's come through the post? I've had them for quite a few years. And... Oh, let's go that in there. Quite a few years, and some of them I've... You know, so they're just not charging, they're not holding a charge for five minutes, and it's no good at all. I've also noticed something else as well. I've got two, I've got three pencil battery chargers, all the same company, um, Energizer. Two of them are exactly the same and were bought exactly the same time and they're exactly the same outputs and everything else. But if I am to put them into a um, like kilowatt meter, one of them shows six watts. Well, between sort of like, uh, let's say between 4.3 and 5 watts, and it's supposed to really be 6 watts. And the other one shows less than that. It shows a maximum of like 4.1, 4.2. So even though they're exactly the same, there's a big difference in the output. I mean, that's like 20% area. So, I've already been in the back of this, I'm not going to lie. I've already been in the back. Why can't I get it undone? What am I missing? Am I missing? No, I'm not. This is fine. It's only four things. Right. I've already been in the back. And I've done some modifications. My modifications, even though it's not easy to see straight away, is this will just come straight out. That's there because these things that were in here I've taken out. These are like... Um, spacing type things and also all this was built up to here and I've cut it all out all gone the reason behind that is because I want to be able to fit these in and now they do two pair of these go in here quite nicely and which means I have the ability to balance charge yeah without taking them out and here's the other one Balance charge. I've got two charges, so I can do this with two individual charges. But what I've got to do is I'm going to attach these. I've got two pair. Oh, sorry, I've got one pair made up already. And they're going to attach basically here, which means I can connect them and disconnect them. And I can do all that pretty much from just taking the back battery pack cover off by having these at underneath the back cover and having these underneath the back cover so I can disconnect these, I can charge them, when they finish charging, reconnect. 
but also I want to be able to use, because if something goes wrong with those batteries, I want to be able to just quickly take the back off, four screws, you saw how quickly that was, and put this in. Disconnect these of course nice and easy from the plugs and put this in. So what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to connect onto this, this, which fits into, of course, these. So I can just interchange these batteries, nice and simply. And I've done most of the work, like I said, I've cut all this out. And I know that these fit, because I've already done it, I've already put the back on and put the cover on and had the, the wires there so I could get to them and I didn't know that. Uh, and now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to desolder this, because this is going to actually be in operation today. I've already been out and I've used these batteries that are on charge over there. Um, and by the time I set this up to have uh, this fitted, it means that I can just literally take these out the back, put this back in with the recharged batteries. Of course, that will just plug straight into the, the sockets that I'm about to solder in. Um, just into one, it doesn't matter, they're just in parallel. And then when, of course, these plug in, both of these will plug in because they'll be in a parallel as well. And we're good to go. We're good to fly. And then I'll be able to do time checks, measurement checks on how long it takes for these to run out against how long it takes these ones to run out. And, just more things to be faffing about with, but it's all good fun. So that's what we're going to do, that's what I'm going to do now. So there we go, we've got 0.5 of an amp, okay, 0.58 of an amp, so that's quite a bit of power. And we haven't even got the quad copped on. So I'm just going to put that there, and I'm going to attach this so the rest of the time and everything else goes through. Okay. So hopefully in a second one's going to be talking to that doctor. Yep. Okay. Now I want to wait for it to start collecting satellites. So we can. Um, it's going to take a couple of few minutes because one I'm indoors and two I don't want to keep turning this over for fear of one either breaking the connection and start again. Uh, but so if we just give it a, a couple of minutes. I should get some idea. But even you know half an amp, over half an amp that's drawing out these batteries. And that's quite a bit of power really. Quite a bit of power. Yeah, let's just give it a, a little bit more time. So we'll, we'll look at what's going on over there. Right, on the on the quad itself, it wants me to calibrate it for starters. Um, but on the we've got five on the five on the on the quad and zero on the handset at the moment. We've got three on the handset. Three on the handset. Seven on the quad, three on the handset. I'm gonna turn it around so you can have a look. I hope you can see that because I can't really see what you can see. I'm trying to turn it the best I can. And it looks like we're in return home mode. So we're going to turn that off. And we're going to put. Um, that is GTS, isn't it? So I've got four on the handset and seven on the quad. And look, it's still going up in power, it's using more power. Seven on the quad, five on the handset. And this isn't, you know, this is without record on or anything like that. I don't actually think there's a chip in it. No. No, no chip. I don't know if you can see that. I don't know if you can, if I can get the angle, I'm sorry if I can't. You just have to. Sort of trust me a little bit. I'm going to wait until there's 12 on both so we get to see the sort of power this is using. And I'm going to be very conscious so I've got the live connection in my hand and I don't want it to touch the case of the GPS. I don't want it to touch anything apart from be where it is. Okay, we got 
Eight on the quad, six on the GPS. On oh, no, six on the uh, handset. And we're still going up in power. Still using more current, look, more and more. Still eight on oh, seven on the seven on the handset, eight on the quad. Yep, and we're still going up. So I'm just gonna, for the sake of just my hand for a second, I'm just gonna just put like that, like that. On. Just ensure that nothing can touch anything. So we're still going up in power. Now I might just do the calibration. Okay, that's one part of the calibration. Now I know it's going to ask you for calibration too, so I'm doing that now. Okay. So now we're in, we have the ability to flight. And now we're going to very carefully, very carefully turn this over. And I've got 12 on the handset, 9 on the quad. I hope you can see that. Can you see that? I hope you can see 12 on the handset. And 11 on the quad now. So we can probably safely assume then. Now this is with nothing else. This is... I haven't got a chip in the quad. I would have to turn this off again. Then again, if I turned it off, it would be very quick for this to come back. And then put a chip in and press record. If I press record, it's just going to see if we can see any difference there, but it's not going to record. And it would actually be the quad doing the work. This is just going to send the signal momentarily. So really, I suppose I don't need to worry about that too much. And I'm certainly not going to be turning the quad on while I've got it set up like this anyhow. So we can say then that we're just going over look drifting between sort of like point six two I saw it got six point two five uh six two four five a second ago. There we went five eight. Uh, in actual fact if I put on um not hold sorry We'll get an idea of the, the highest and the lowest and the average. Can you see that what's going on behind there? I'm really sorry. And I'll turn it over. Just keep everything. It's just, uh, just give that a moment to. If I can push that up right there. Can you get a good view of that? And I'm hoping that I can, I don't want to have to take the board out, I'm hoping I can literally just solder to here. This is great because it says 4 volt to 13 volt that you can put into this. I don't know if you can see that, I hope you can. 4 volt to 13 volt. So these being round about 8.4 volts are what they are now because they're fully charged. Um, is within that acceptable range and I can just parallel them up. I have seen somebody else do something like this and they put a buck converter in and all sorts to keep that 6 volts but mm, you know 6 volts is this the, the way I look at it is this is going to require the same amount of power so if you put 6 volts in it's going to require more current if you put 8 volts in it's going to require less current or at least that's the way my brain tries to tell me it works so I'm going to go along with, I've got this range, and I'm going to sit sort of like middle of the range, ish. And hopefully I'm going to get extended battery um, control times. If I don't, this whole thing has been a waste of time. But I don't think that's going to work out like that. I'm pretty confident it's going to work out the way I think it's going to work out. So, I'm going to solder those onto there. I'm going to solder this onto here. And that's it. And that's it.
We're done, because I've done everything else already. I, I've done that, I, I videoed it. I did the whole thing on video, and I did it all. Um, so if you do want to see all of that, I'll do it. I can put that up, but I'm not going to bore everybody with the labours of it. It's quite simple, really. Um, well, we just want to see it uh, in action. And the ability, of course, to put these in and to be able to disconnect them while they're in and to charge them. And then disconnect the charges and reconnect them. We're good. I was going to do some fan dangly stuff with switches. Okay, I've got some switches and plug socket and stuff. And I was going to, oh, I thought, oh, God, I'm, I'm making a lot of work for myself. I don't need to do it like that. And besides, what happens if I knock the switch while I'm using it and I'll cut out on power? It is gonna, it's gonna come back home to me, isn't it? Which is pretty good. So, but let's just get on and do this. Without further ado, and I got more of these things spare. Yay! All taken from another helicopter that I flew into trees a couple of years ago. I was trying to see if I could fly a helicopter that only had one propeller on top. And guess what? At that time I couldn't. At this time I don't know if I can either, so I can't bother with them anymore. I got another one. I bought, I bought two and one for spares just in case I smash one up. I did smash one up and it was so easily done to smash it up I didn't bother using it once for spares, so I'm probably going to put that uh, yeah, flog it or something. I don't mean flog it, like take a big tree branch to it and start hitting it. I mean, sell it. I'll speed through this bit because we're going to wait now two minutes for the um, thing to heat up. Unless there's something interesting I can tell you, I don't think I've got anything interesting to say. Oh, I've just got something in the post. Hold on. Okay, got something in the post today. Let's rip it open like it's Christmas. Oh, brilliant. Transistors. Transistors. Uh, these, if I remember, are complementary two, 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 uh, two, 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 I can't get it open. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, ten of each. Ten of each. Uh, I shall get into them at a later date. I just fancy some of these. I saw a couple of a few circuits I wanted to build that use complementary pairs with two in two n two do two do's. Uh, but they're in this uh, these like older style metal uh, cases. And I thought, oh, they're nice and cheap. I get some though. Apparently guaranteed to be original, genuine. Oops, excuse me, genuine. Uh, and I'll make a little project look quite nice. That was us in the post today. The post today, the post today. Mm -hmm. Let's just uh, get the solder on just now. Get this rolling. I could just splice this, I know, but I, I'm not going to, so I'm going to solder. If I can actually get the damn thing out. Do you know, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut them. Because I can see them, I'll probably get into a mess trying to get that result. Well, I'm just seeing a balancing board down there now. Um, so I'm just going to cut them. I'm going to cut them so they're actually usable still. Okay. And I'm going to take this up here. I'll take that off there. And do the first part of the modification. And that's going to be with this little baby. Because what we want is we want this on here.
Okay. So I've got two nice bits of solder there. So let's get these soldered on here. Because this means that I can just connect this in at any stage to the two of the plugs. see what I'm doing. So there we go. So now that's going to be nice and easily to connect in to these two um, into these two sockets, that plug. Into these two sockets that's going to go here. And I'm debating whether just to splice, whether just to um, trim this wire back here and just literally go to here or to try and go on to the solder the joint. I'm just wondering what might be to the, my the benefit. I think I'm going to try and go onto the solder joint itself, and if I can't, I'm going to put two nice big bits of solder on there, and if I can't, then I'll just go onto these ones. That's, uh, that's I think, is going to be a win situation. But this, what's going on with this solder? Is this like trying to tell me it's a halfway mark or something, because it's sort of tied up? Oh, that's a bit annoying. I can't just... And roll it. That's what to do with the way that they put it on at the, the factory. Bloody, what's going on there? That is annoying. I like to be able to just pull it out. Oh, oh, it's done it again. Never mind. Let's put a little bit of solder on. I know it's not very good for you to breathe this stuff in, but it does not smell nice. I certainly shouldn't be breathing it in like that. But I've got to, I need to buy some carbon filter and just set myself up with a smaller extractor fan because the one I've got is way too big, way too over the top. It gets in the way now. Now I'm using the phone on its little stand. Oh, I've got a non-rechargeable battery on charge, I just need to keep an eye on that. That's all 9.20 milliamps at 9.1 volts at the moment. Uh, okay. So they look like they've got enough, enough solder on them. I'm going to stick a bit more solder on these joints here. Just to make sure there's plenty. I might just clean that actually. Make sure we have a go in with a nice, beautiful clean tip. I've shown how this takes around about um, 630 milliamps while it's running when it's got 12 GPS's and all that sort of stuff on the go. Okay, uh, so yeah, I pretty, uh, it, it might be worth me either editing part out of that video and splicing into this one, or actually putting that video up as well and having this as the quick see how it you know how it's done and the other one has the in-depth like you know cutting through these bits and all that sort of stuff we'll see we'll see I just hope that now reaches because this is the, the case this is the this is going to be inside the um, just inside the case there if I remember rightly that was going to go I may have to cut the top of this out. Well, that's fine if I do. Oh, 
actually lovely. You don't want any sort of cloudy connections or anything. That's a bit nice. Okay, right, oh. That's them two done. If I just push those wires out of the way, they're not going to be interfering with anything or each other, which is the main thing. We don't want any short circuits. And they look nice and substantial enough to do the job. Now, well, what we're going to do, really, I suppose, is plug one of these in and kiss goodbye to my transceiver. <laughs> I say transceiver because we got information that comes back from the quad to the display here. Um, so it's transmitting and receiving. So transceiver. Is that all the soldering I've got to do? Is that really it? Have I done it all? Oh, brilliant. I can turn this thing off. I can turn it off. I can re -tin my my tip to make sure that stays beautiful. Generally you end up doing little jobs like this, you end up putting more solder back on the tip just to ensure that you keep it looking nice um, not, not to keep it looking nice, just to keep it performing nice you know, I've got no idea what's going on here, it's all in a mess and a tangle and a bit of a knot going on there oh my life, now it's all gone really skewy great, so let's start pat around the solder now Got another reel of that as well. Got it sent to me free of charge. So now when I put these this in, I can literally just put this in here. And that will fit back in the way it was because of those cutouts already there for the lugs of course. And then all I gotta do is connect up this. Maybe not that way, but that way. And I have that connected. So, four pencil patches, not a problem. When I'm not using the pencil patches, I should now be able to just put one of these in, or two, because uh, they're parallels. God, I've got to double check these connections again, <laughs> just because this is it now, it's carrying on to here. Oh, why am I starting to sweat? Oh, would you believe it? Oh, I did try to put it in the wrong way around. Good job that didn't work. And that just means that the actual wires are the correct way around. But this is the moment of truth. That's just one on there. It's just going to be a parallel, parallel connection for the other one. And there we go. Full kick your ass battery. Oh, I've not had that before when I put the pencil batteries in there. Because that is like 8 volts. That's 8.4 volts. Loads of power. So, there we go. Now I'm just going to take that out and fit these two batteries. That is quite an annoying beeper. Uh, fit these two batteries like this. As it's going to be these that I'll have in now. Just to everything up. I probably should try and do that like that because, well I don't need to because even though the wires are plenty long enough I really do need the wires out of the way and I did decide the other day um, that I was going to feed that down there because this will connect and as long as I can get these from, I don't mind undoing the back but wouldn't it just be nice and convenient if I could do it all from the back of the panel just by sliding off the back thing. Um, and the, there is some space, but I think what I'm going to have to do is I think I can't work out which way is going to be best. Because I didn't have these on when I checked it before, so there could be a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a disagreement with what I'm actually saying. But it did work before just having these actual connection terminals. Um, 
and the charge and ones there and I could access them all from the back but I hadn't got the solder into place so couldn't honestly say how that's going to be now but regardless it's four screws and if it's yeah, if I um, like it with anything else it's like my little Simer thing the, the second time I'm changing the motor I don't even put, bother putting the screws back in where's the point? if I keep crashing it I look around the edges if it's starting to come apart a bit I just clip it back together again and just carry on flying <laughs> How lazy am I? But the reason why, because I don't want to be charging these with it connected. Because, okay, there's a possibility I could, but it's the balance in them between these. There'd normally be another like sense wire type thing going on. And I'm not 100% proficient on what it is I'm saying right now. So please don't condemn me for not getting this exactly right. So I'm not going to try and preach anything. All I'm trying to say is that I feel more comfortable disconnecting these when I'm charging because I don't believe that I can just leave them connected because these two circuits then will be connected in parallel while I'm charging with two different chargers and there's no sense between to make sure they both get charged equally it could be that just having them connected might mean that they try and balance themselves out equally but I don't know enough to say that's going to happen. That's why I've gone to the thinking of disconnecting whenever I do it. Okay, if anybody out there has got a, um, hey, you know, you can do it and you've got enough experience or whatever to back that up, then great, I'd love to hear from you. But apart from that, I'm going to do it this way because I believe that I'm on to more of a winner doing it like this. And as all I've done is just put these in um, in power. I'm pretty confident that I shouldn't have any fires or maybe I should leave that for a few minutes. Just no, because everything I sort of understand means that this should be okay. And as you can see, look, I'm just getting little, my little, that's the wrong one, isn't it? Oh, that one did. I just got a little stick out here. This is what I want. This is this is how I want it. Because this this will move in. Oh, that's not good. I'm actually going to wire coming out the, the thing there. But this is what I thought might be easy for me to be able to do. And then there, I, it doesn't matter which one goes into which charger because they're both the same. They're both the same. Two cell LiPo 800 milliamp chargers. Nothing's getting warm, is it? Just my hands. I'm sweating a little bit because I'm nervous. I'm nervous that I'm getting this right. And Now, this is going to be the thing. Can I actually put this on the back and have it all be in there? Um, it's probably going to be a case of no, you can't. And you're right. No, there is a little bit of a, a little bit of a thing. But it's just all that means. It's not a fail. All it means is I've got to have one out of the way a little bit more, or think of another way of putting these in to have it easy to access. Because if that's down there like that, the rest of it's going to be okay. The rest of it will be okay. You watch. But if I have to take the back off to do it, I may as well just took all the wires out of the way. And not not have that headache at all about trying to squeeze everything in because that should be okay now. Let me see what I'm doing. That should be okay now, I'm saying, even though it's not really. So maybe that's what I'm going to do then. I can. So this is where I, I, I was thinking about putting switches in to be able to switch um, these batteries apart from each other, not disconnect them maybe from the system, but just switch them away from each other. So I would just have um, a switch to disconnect the two batteries from being in parallel, uh, and that's it. So, so hopefully there, I shouldn't really have any issues, because that seems... There we go. And then if I screw all that down, that's good. And we've still got... We have plenty of... Um, NH power. See, I was just thinking about putting the toggle switch up here. So I got two batteries on or one battery. Which then meant when I charge them both, I'm going to switch onto one battery. So I've got two, two separate chargers. But of course, I'd have to do that with proper isolation, positive and negative, disconnected from each other. And that, that's the way I'd uh, be wanting to do it. So if anyone's got any suggestions on that, I'd really be chuffed. 
uh, to hear from you. And, uh, and that's it, I'm going to call that a bit of a win. A little bit of a win. Like I say, I've not seen that, even when I put in a... But then again, my, uh, my Duracell batteries, I think, have been a little bit depleted anyway. Well, I've not seen it on full blast before. So that's my first little modification. I'm still waiting for the antennas to come through. Um, so I've got my distance for the um, for the visual and also for the for the range. I took it up uh, over 200 meters today, and got some great footage. Great footage. Unfortunately, after 12 12 minutes, my that I, I forgot to clear off the stuff that was on the 4 gig drive and um, after after 12, 12 and a half minutes, 12, 37 or something it sort of switched off the recording uh, I only know that because when I played it back here of course it tells me on the player how long the time is and I had loads of fun with it afterwards uh, plenty of time so I still yesterday I got 22 minutes flight out of it but I wasn't doing any recording I was really chuffed with that because uh, I had my phone out there with me. I did the timer, and uh, today, but unfortunately, what seemed to have happened was I did a cut and paste from the 4 gig cards, put it onto my computer drive, and I made a new folder for it, drone flights, um, put it into that, and sort of went back to the actual drive to uh, to watch it, and it was there, not a problem. Did some other things, rebooted, went back to the drive, and you know I can't even find the folder, let alone the. Uh, let alone the um, the files, the, the video files. So, I don't know what's happened there. I don't know what's happened because I've got some great scenery. Great scenery, because there's no wind. No wind today, or at least there wasn't. I'm looking out at the trees now and they're blowing around a little bit. Uh, but still, uh, no wind, and I was well chuffed. Of course, I've got the screws in them, so I can not lose them. Looking all around there. The thingy. So that's it, guys. That, that's it for the first bit of modification. I've got the extra power. Um, I've got extra voltage, uh, just a little bit, only a couple of volts above you know, what you get from this. I've still got the capability of just plugging this in with batteries, so it is a case of just these four screws, which, and to be completely honest with you, it's not as low, it's got lots of screwing to them either. It's only um, a few turns and they sort of tighten up. So. And knowing me, because I don't intend on throwing this thing around, I can just leave, just put two screws in. But I won't, I'll do the four screws because I'm not feeling that lazy today. I like that nip down, done. That's nip down tight. Obviously, I just, I just heard one of the screws that I could hear rattling around in there. Just lying on the floor, so maybe I won't be putting all four in there. Well, I'm not right this minute anyway, I'll have to have a little scoot around for that, but I'll do that in my own time. What have I got in? I've got one in that corner, and one in the top corner. But I will find the other ones, and I will put them in. I thought there was another one left in there, but I must have shook them both off. Oh yeah, there is, there's one left in here. So, yeah, let's do that again. Bit of bang, nice and quick look, and full thing on the battery. Great stuff. I just got to wait another about seven hours now for this thing to charge. I put it on. I wrote it down over there. There's no smell from the not burning or anything. I mean, it's good. <laughs> uh, I think it was 11:05 when I put it on to charge. So it'll be interesting to see because I've complained to the seller. I complained to the seller because this thing's taking about six and a half hours nearly seven hours to charge which means that the 800 milliamp output of that charger which I know is not 800 milliamp do you know I know? I'll tell you what I know because look it wants 12 volt input to have 800 milliamp output and that's all it's drawing okay now on when you buy these and you get the 800 milliamp from Hubson here it is. And hopefully you're better get focused in on that. But that says 800 milliamp. Uh, 0.8 amp, 0.8 amp output. Yeah, 12 volt. They advertise on theirs. Now this never worked for me. 
because they gave me a 120 volt adapter okay to plug into this when I should have had a 240 volt adapter really shouldn't I um, yeah, that's being where I live and I didn't check it because because I just didn't think I'd have to honestly and so uh, but I was I was really hoping that the advertised time for charging those batteries which you, I think it's supposed to be like uh, just under three hours is because you're using you know 800 milliamp yeah uh, now I, I could I, I, I could connect it up to my power supply I could connect it up to that I could set up to 800 milliamp put it on 12 volt and just directly connect but there's a two cell thing and this is a balanced charging I want it to try and keep the um, keep the battery as good as possible for as long as possible um, so, so that's not 800 million. and it's taking so long but Hobson have said that they're going to give me they've really confused me with how they're going to do it they've given me a, they're going to either send me out another one of these which they haven't got at the minute until the 2nd of July which is fine or they're going to give me $30 in credit into my Gearbest wallet but they're going to exchange it down at 5 five uh, credits type thing per dollar you have to get 50 you have to buy enough to get 50 of these cre uh, credit points to get one dollar but they want to exchange rate with me for five for one dollar for my thirty dollar refund oh I'm one for doing the figures so I don't like the idea of that that, that transaction because that means I get like less than two and a half quid and these cost more than that to buy here or from there so I prefer to have another one of these things because if anything goes wrong at least you've got another backup you know that means I'll, I'll, have, I'll have three working ones which is great plus the IMAX um, we're all good aren't we anyway I see I'm bottling on now so I'm going to shut up success on the battery upgrade um, I was going to try and use these types of batteries, but they just bloody won't fit in. They would, but I'd have to have them going across the top of the GPS. And I didn't really want to have a, um, you know, that metal type stuff going across the top of the GPS. So that's how I'm hoping it's going to work out quite well. I will do time checks on one recharge of these two, and we'll see uh, how that works out. The, each pack, by the way, is um, 1100 milliamp hour. So I've got 2200 milliamp hour on the 8.4 volts. Which um, will work out, of course. You know, you can say, well, one of these is 2,200 milliamp. Yeah, but it's only 3.7 volts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think about the math. Okay. Next upgrade antennas. Catch you later, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching.